Hey Squeaky Tree family, so today the boys and I are going to be showing you guys an ultimate guide to dry canning, vacuum sealing, and vacuum canning, whatever, a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, and some of the stuff just needs to be sealed really good, so we're going to get into that. I am cutting up some strawberries so I'm getting ready to make strawberry jam. This is not a how-to video on jam. I'm just showing you how to freeze your can at the moment. So you grind up the strawberries, you add in your other ingredients, sugar, pectin, things like that, and then you're going to fill your jars that have been sterilized um, and with your jam. And now you put your seal on and your lid and it's ready for the freezer. All right, so we're gonna move on to vacuum seal canning. Now make sure you take note that this process is not FDA approved, but we have never had a problem and many, 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 many other homesteaders have not either. All right, so I'm doing dried hash browns right now. And so make sure you tap the jar just to make sure everything compacts in there and you can fit a lot more when you do that. It's pretty cool. Vacuum sealing does not sterilize the food, it just removes the air from the jar. So you see these oxygen absorbers, that's going to help that process as well. So you're going to add an oxygen absorber into the jar and that's just going to keep oxygen out, which will help the shelf life of your food that you put in there just to be longer. So we're going to fill the rest of the jars. Some vacuum sealed food will need to be frozen or refrigerated um, just until the active microorganisms, which can contaminate the sealed food, dies. Okay, so you're talking about eggs, larvae, things like that that could be living in your flour. So I'm gonna show you later how I preserve my flour. Okay, so vacuum sealing pros are extended shelf life. They preserve and extend uh, just a surplus of goods that you can buy in bulk and with everything going on in the world right now I would definitely be taking this into consideration You can do so many things like this to preserve it So you can do your dried hash browns like you see me doing you can do crackers You can do cereal goldfish animal crackers a lot of your snacks that you want to have access to in case you can't anymore in the grocery store. After you do all of this, you're going to want to store all of these jars on a shelf somewhere safe where they're not going to crack or fall. In a cool environment is best and then that will continue your shelf life for uh, years to come. All right, now we're gonna add an oxygen absorber to each of our cans. And then they will be ready to vacuum seal. And we're gonna show you that. All right, now we're gonna put all of our lids into this small pan here. And then I'm going to cover them with water and I'm going to put them on the stove. We are not going to boil them because you don't want the seals to be ruined, but we are going to just lightly bring them to a simmer. While we're waiting for it to boil, I'm gonna show you this sugar jar and I'm gonna show you, you just open it up and if you have a really good lid with a rubber seal around it, then that's all you need for a lot of things that just need to be sealed. Sugar is an example. Another example is your seasoning. So this is seasoning for like if we do deer jerky or something like that, but you can do Italian seasoning, sage, anything you want. You put it in. Look, I can't even open it. So it just seals it really nice. And then you're gonna take them out and dry them off. I'm gonna show you now how to vacuum seal. So you're gonna get your scale and you're gonna get, um, you're gonna make sure you're gonna zero it out and then you're gonna get your vacuum seal bag and then a brown paper bag. Your brown paper bag, you're going to put inside of your vacuum seal bag. 
and I will show you why you do that in a minute. And then you're gonna take, like say if you're gonna do flour, you're gonna scoop your flour in there over the scale so you can see how many pounds you want. I normally do five pound packages. Then you're gonna fold it down one time so when you vacuum seal it, the powder won't get sucked up in the vacuum, just like that. Very, very, very easy and simple. Then you have a package like this. You write what's in it, the poundage, the date. Then you're going to stick that into the freezer for three days and take it out and put it on your shelf. And that is going to significantly help the shelf life. So I'm going to show you again doing pasta. So I'm just going to open up my bag. I'm going to put my brown paper bag inside. I'm going to fill it up with pasta. I'm going to do two pounds since we have seven people living in our house. And so whatever works for you. So I'm gonna just put it on the scale and I'm gonna shove it all in there. Eli's helping me, thanks, buddy, buddy, buddy. Put that in there, Eli. Please. Now we're going to just fold it down one time so the air can still be taken out, but nothing will fall out. And now it's ready to seal. So I put it in the vacuum sealer. Now we're gonna hit vacuum seal. It's going to start sucking out all the air. You can put an oxygen absorber in these as well. Surely won't hurt. So it sucks it all nice and that is going to help the shelf life. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna get our lid. We're gonna put it on top, then we're gonna do our vacuum seal attachment that just fits right over the jar. Whether it's regular mouth, wide mouth, they have both attachments. You put it right on top of the lid, and then you hit vacuum seal again. Yep. And then you just let it seal on up, and you do all of them, and then they're ready for your shelf. Here, let's take an opal break. Hello, Opal. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. I love you. And we gotta take a dinosaur break. Go mad it. Go mad it. Go mad it. Oh, that is super scary. Oh gosh. <laughs> He's gonna get y'all. He's gonna get y'all real good. <laughs> oh boy. You can do the same thing with noodles. So what I did here was I took elbow noodles that you would make macaroni and cheese from and I just filled it up in this jar. Very, very simple. This is a half gallon jar. So it holds lots of noodles. So you're gonna fill, 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 fill this. And make a mess like me and EI. <laughs> and you're just gonna keep on filling until you run out of noodles. Now we've got our noodles in there and I want to show you something that um, that we did was, so I took a Kraft macaroni and cheese box and I took the powder out, I weighed it, I saw how much it weighed and then I got my own cheese powder and I made my own little packets. So two ounces for one pound of noodles. So that way if we can't get macaroni and cheese, ours is ready to go. How cool is that, y'all? We got our own macaroni and cheese already. I do the double seal. So one seal is the first where you vacuum seal it and then I just do a regular seal. Now we're gonna move on to dry canning, which is also known as oven canning. I'm gonna show you oats. You're gonna wash and you're gonna dry your jars. Be sure the rims are free of cracks or nicks. You're gonna heat your oven to 200 degrees. You fill your jar up. This is a half gallon as well with a wide mouth. You're gonna fill your jar up and be extra messy like a me, yeah, messy Jesse. And you're gonna fill it up all the way. 
until you either run out of jar space or you run out of oats. You can do lots of things this way. You can do beans, rice, flour, grains, pasta, again, cereal, sugar, things like that. You're gonna make sure, so I have one jar in here for demonstration purposes, but you can fill your whole tray up with jars. Okay, so why do you dry out foods in the oven that are already dry? This kills your eggs, your larvae, just like the freezing does in the vacuum canning method and then once the jars are filled you're gonna put them in the oven for at least 60 minutes and that'll be great they are gonna be really hot when you take them out so make sure you use gloves you're gonna take them out and you're gonna put them on something that can take the heat as well you're gonna put your lids your clean lids that you have simmered in your water that are dry now on top of the jars and you and then you're gonna put your rim on them uh, then you're gonna hear that beautiful sound of the jars sealing. And now they're ready for your shelf. So apparently another goat is having a baby, so we gotta go see what is up. She had it? Yeah, she had it. Is it okay? Did you do it? She's just now starting to, she didn't even wanna be near it. She's never been a mom. Right it's very tiny. You're not gonna be a pulley again. Sparkle. I just, I, I have been here. Go. I, all I heard was, Mah. and I was like, what is that sound? And she's like, Mah. she was screaming all day. We were out here. Like, no, no, no. She, but this, 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 this is not the point. She was bellowing a lot, you know, yeah, like bleeding yeah. or whatever. But then all of a sudden, I just hear, Mah. like that deep. And I was like, what is that? And then I heard it again, and, I, and that's when I yelled to them, and I came out, and she already had it. <coughs> like, it was like two mats. Two mats. And she gave birth. Good girl, Maple. All right, you lovely, 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 lovely YouTube family. Thank you so much for joining. I know this was a really quick instructional video, but I wanted you to have all the knowledge really, really fast. Keep coming back to the video as much as you want when you are actually doing the process at home yourself. If you have any other questions, please ask them in the comments and we will get back to you as soon as we can. God bless all of you, each, each and every one of you.